Normal People is nominated for four Emmys, including for its casting by Louise Keeley. I'm Riley Chow of Gold Derby. Now, you have over 100 credits as a casting director, and this seems to be your first nomination from any organization. Do you feel like you do or you did uh, have a thankless job? A thankless job? No, not at all. I love my job. And I've always loved my job. Um, I love working in Ireland. I love working in the Irish industry. Um, I feel really rewarded by my job. Every time, I always say, at the point at which I sort of get to the read-through and we see the world in which we've created full of humans who are about to sort of embody these characters and there's that kind of weird first day of school feeling and uh, that's where I get a huge amount of joy. So yeah, no, not thank you at all. Now, what were the biggest reservations that you had in casting Paul Meskell and Daisy Edgar Jones? Um, reservations? Uh, honestly, Ray, I can't think of one. What was really exciting about casting them was the sort of, um, the fact that the decisions on both sides and then together, of course, was entirely unanimous. So obviously there's me and my colleague Karen Scully who works with, would be the casting team. And then of course, um, Ed Guiney, Catherine McGee, um, Emma Norton and Lenny Abrahamson. And so, you know, we found Paul very early on, which I'm quite sure you guys have spoken about already. And, um, and there was just a sort of a real excitement around this guy, Paul Mescal. And then, of course, when they met him, it was terrific. Um, and then when Daisy came along, we recalled them very quickly. And we had seen at that point, I mean, an immense amount of talent. And, um, and yeah, no, there was no reservations. Like literally on the day when the two of them uh, recalled, they read a number of pieces together and um, they left the room and we sort of very cordially ex like you know brought them out and thanked them and that good stuff and then when we went into the room we all kind of high-fived <laughs> and made a big yeah it was terrific so um i don't recall any reservations to be honest what about his lack of experience uh in television that's a really good question um and actually not something which has come up before uh that happens every now and then you know in casting as you know um when an actor is really terrific. I mean, now, in Paul's case, he had trained in the Lear, which is um, one of the top drama schools in Ireland. So his foundation was there, and I'd seen him in a few plays there, um, and there was a lot of uh, really excited kind of talk around this actor called Paul Meskell. And then, of course, um, the Gate Theatre in Dublin sort of nabbed him directly out of drama school, and then he went into the Gate and the Abbey. So he had worked in the theatre quite a lot, and I mean, Yes, he had very little experience, but also, yes, he was the right person for the job and, um, and a clever enough person who was going to learn quickly the stuff that he would need. But at the end of the day, it was more important that um, the right actor um, embody Connell rather than sort of lots of days on set and their experience, you know. And when you're meeting with the executive producers to cast these roles in the first place, are you kind of just bringing your own ideas to the table or are you all settling for like, you know, this role has to have these certain qualities? Um, I mean, it's definitely collaborative, but at the beginning of every process, um, you know, it's like when you read a book, it's sort of, you kind of imagine who this person is. And more often than not, I sort of am driven by instinct and a feeling and a quality in a character and a quality in a person. And so it's sort of that kind of human kind of intangible, those things. And then varying projects require varying things. So of course, sometimes, um, you know, you have to sort of uh, kind of look for more experienced actors. And sometimes you're looking for people with various skills and all that stuff. And, um, and yes, of course, when we start the process, um, I will have definite ideas about who might suit the roles, but also definite ideas about a plan in which we might go and find people with kind of very like um, expert sort of ballet, you know, skills or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and then the director and the producers will have their ideas as well. Um, it's very collaborative, but it's, and it's very important um, that, that I have ideas. Otherwise, you know, people aren't gonna give me the job. <laughs> You know, yeah. Did you have any ideas about who you might like to cast, um, you know, putting the time period aside? Like you thought like, oh, like this character of Marianne would be great for this actress, you know, 50 years ago or something. 
you know, often there is a sort of a, well, you know, you've seen this film and you've seen a wonderful actor like, Rachel McAdams or Nicole Kidman and you kind of you do sort of have that kind of feeling but when it came to Marianne and Connell um, it was much more about because the source material was the book for you know until the scripts arrived and um, and it was much more about those characters on the page in the book and finding people to sort of inhabit those and um, and we started off with a very blank page, as in, um, yeah, it was, you know, it was sort of casting the net wide, kind of thinking about maybe more experienced actors, but also people who were kind of starting out and just actually genuinely looking for the right people at that point. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't have the scripts when you were starting out then? Not at the early stages, no. I mean, they were being written, but we worked off the book. Yeah, okay. at the early stages. And then, of course, the, the scripts followed. Yeah. So what were you looking for in Marianne and Connell? Um, well, okay, so there's a couple of things that are on the page. As in, you know, sort of first of all, you're looking for somebody who um, is in their final year of school, but also in their sort of first year in, in college. So somebody who has to sort of span, you know, those years um, physically and kind of, you know, obviously with the help of costume, the help of all that stuff, they will change over those years. But somebody who is physically believable as a person in their sort of final year of school. Um, we were looking for um, kind of, I mean, you know, you could sort of go down the whole, well, he plays GAA football and, you know, she's kind of got a coolness about her. But, but it was much more to do with um, the kind of desires and the wants and the needs of the two characters and the kind of difficulties within those characters. And I suppose what, you know, Paul and Daisy, both of them, I kind of, it's hard to speak about one and not the other, but it's um, what they were able to sort of inhabit or and project therefore was all of those kind of detailed nuances because of course, um, and also the arc. I mean, my goodness, like, you know, you kind of go into it sort of looking for these two 17 year olds and, you know, he's the sort of hero in the football team and she's the kind of slight outside, but maybe a little bit cool. And we kind of can see that, you know, things are going to change for them, but we have to be able to find the people who are able to um, uh, kind of get to the point at which they have absolutely like he has unraveled to the point at which he's in that scene with the therapist and she is um in like she goes to sweden and, and experiences all that sort of physical stuff you know um obviously on the page there is a lot of kind of physical intimacy in the scenes and um and that was something which we had to talk about and be really honest about from the outset as well um about not apologizing for the fact that um that these humans are in a kind of a very early and very loving and very kind of sexual relationship um, and just uh, finding the right people to do that. So, so yeah, I suppose you could kind of say like football skills and, you know, that stuff that kind of like the, the end of your CV, but it, like being completely honest, it was much more about believability in the early years and um, talent in order to kind of uh, follow their arc and, um, and stick with them and believe them throughout. Now I say this and I kind of, you know, but I but I remind myself as well that, you know, what we found in these two actors was we believed at that point in time, like a perfect combination of, you know, all of these qualities as the characters have, you know, they are so, like the, the source material was so great to have because of course that's like this sort of massive character description, isn't it? And, um, and, and the character and the actors were able to, uh, to kind of pr provide that, I suppose, but but then they were kind of the way I the way I see it is they were sort of gently carried through the series in the hands of in the quite masterful hands of Lenny Abramson and then Hetty McDonald. Do you know what I mean? So um, so we you know we 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 saw sort of what we needed to see to the point which and then they knew that they would be very very well directed, obviously, and you know and all the design and the costume and everything. It's just uh, it's like massive collaboration you know and all of these kind of HODs and I'm just at the beginning but I feel like sort of we journey them to the end the masters of which are the directors you know 
Yeah, I did want to ask about that actually. Like once you have cast these roles or any other roles, uh, what's your ongoing involvement with them? Or, or are you always just kind of on to the next thing? Yeah, so um, I mean, the short answer is, we're done once the contract is signed you know that's our job television is obviously different sometimes different but like it, it tends to be a longer shoot of course so um uh so in the case of normal people i felt it was actually really nice because we were sort of casting ahead but still able to sort of communicate with catherine and emma about how it was going and um and take a vested interest and um in that and luckily they were very very happy with how they were going and everybody was delighted with the progress so yeah it's a good question yeah and not necessarily on normal people but uh what happens when you miscast somebody um i've never thought about that as in i've never thought about it in those in those terms and i certainly never been told <laughs> i've miscast somebody um i mean i think you know, we, when we are casting something and, um, you know, obviously the director and the producers have the final say, we don't make the decision until everybody's happy, you know? And luckily, I mean, it's, there is so much talent out there that um, it's very rare we can't find like a number of people who would be amazing in it. I understand that uh, for this project, you reached out uh, across the ocean to America. Uh, can you tell me about how that experience differed for you? Sure, it was brilliant. Um, I love collaborating and, um, and I've done it a few times um, on sort of bigger studio films for um, like international cast and directors. So this time what we did was um, we reached out to Susan Shopmaker, who is a cast and director in New York. and she very kindly did a search for us on the ground in New York. So her sort of invaluable local knowledge around kind of people working in theater or the Paul Meskels of the world started at drama school, you know, that kind of stuff. So she was great. And then Matt LaSalle, who she works with and is friendly with obviously helped us in LA. So, I mean, I think that's brilliant. Like, you know, as I always say in my, in my company, there are three casting directors and three casting assistants. And I just feel really strongly that six heads are better than one you know so um so susan is amazing and um and then of course when we went to scandinavia for the lucas role um anders nygaard who works out of copenhagen was there to help us uh, with that and again just was brilliant um and does the stuff that i don't know do you know what i mean yeah what would you say was the most challenging role to cast other than the two co-leads um again that's a really good question i think i mean sometimes there was sort of practical stuff around availability you know kind of later down you know we would have seen people from marianne and connell and then you sort of come back around to another actor for a different role and they might have an issue with availability and that can be tricky so that's kind of boring practical stuff um uh it was just really important that we kept going and sometimes the, the sort of recalls and sometimes the searches took a while, you know, it was never sort of, you know, two days later, we've got this guy and three days later, it, you know, each character took its own sort of investigation and, and we had to kind of curate that, that group, those two groups, like, correctly. Um, so it was, it was in-depth work. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, what was really important is that each of the supporting characters, in the way that they do in the book, make a very substantial impact so for example when i watch the trinity gang for example you know elliot salt who plays joanna like i just her and, and india who plays peggy and nile who uh or desi who plays nile like desi eastwood like they just give me so much joy because i believe that they make a massive impact in the story so what was like as per the book what was really important is that we just didn't forget that along the way that everybody that we cast um, made a massive stamp in the story and, um, and made their presence as a character felt and, um, and represented a current and diverse Ireland, you know? All right, Louise, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to chat. Uh, best of luck to you at the Creative Arts Emmys coming up. Uh, we have many other normal people interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as interviews with other Emmy nominees.